Okay everyone, this is uh, a walkthrough on how to tweak Dolphin 3.0. Uh, I forgot to go over that in the last video. I'm going to make a video response with this on the uh, on the Game Booster video that I did. So, we're just going to go through and tweak things. There's not a lot to do, but there are necessary things to do. And I'll try to explain it in the best way possible. Okay. We're pretty much going to be messing around in here. We're not going to be messing with these two. We're going to go to configure. Okay. What we want here. It's pretty obvious. If you can't do it on your own, obviously this is the video for you. But, enable dual core. What that does is if you have two, two uh, cores, this would be perfect for that. But, it still works without having two cores. However, it will... Uh, it will and can cause problems. It's giving me problems. Okay, enable idle uh, skipping. I don't need to do that, but it, it's very good for you to do so. Um, and enable cheats, and I'll get into, uh, into that a little later. Alright, frame limit. This matters a lot. It's uh, kind of like torrenting. If you have your up and down speed set to unlimited, you're not going to get the most out of your, out of your, uh, your bit torrent. So, just like touring, you want to set a limit to those. And that's the way frame limit works. You want to set that to 60 FPS because that's the best, that's the max you're going to get out of any game. So limit to 60. Because if you have it, if you have it set to uh, auto, that's fine. Set it off. It can go way over and it can totally mess up your game. It's not a good thing. Uh, Alright, I'm going to mess with your graphics card. You want to use the... Uh, JIT recompiler, it is recommended. The other two, uh, interpreter, very slow. Uh, and the JIT IL is experimental, obviously, so you don't want to use that. And we're done here in general. Now, your interface, turn off panic handler so you don't need it unless you can run at 100%. I actually turned panic handlers on to slow me down quite a bit. Now, uh, these are just themes for for dolphin obviously it themes just mess around with these here and all your little icons and stuff and that confirm on stop uh show confirmation box before stopping your game okay audio the only time you really want to mess with this you want to leave everything the way it is is if you want to adjust the the volume like say me playing a game i want to adjust the volume down so that you can hear me all right uh doesn't matter D uh, D sound or X audio does not matter if you have a lower end graphics card you might want to go with uh, 32 uh, Hertz uh, 32,000 Hertz I go with 48 all right now we're done here in the configuration we're gonna head on over to graphics this is what matters I'm gonna start from the top go to the bottom now, obviously, if you have Deck Direct 3D 11, use it. If you have Deck 3, uh, Direct 3D 9, use it. Doesn't matter if you have a low or high graphics card, use the latest version. You always want to do that. All right, this is just your adapter, your graphics card. I have Intel, HD Graphics, Family, whatever. Um, all right, your resolution. Now, if you're running at, say, 720 to 576 you want to go with that if you're running 640 to 480 you want to go with that now if you want to speed up your game and have it uh, using your resolution you want to set your internal resolution to 640 to 480 and what that is is that's standard that's standard uh, gaming is what the GameCube actually runs on now I'm running 1920 to 1080 I can run with very good very good uh, aspects sharp um, okay aspect ratio set it to auto um, unless you have a it should pretty much pick it up 16.9 means widescreen uh, 4.3 means standard that's just a standard full screen mode and the stretch to window uh, you should understand that alright uh, these are just uh, things will show up in your window as you're playing your game like show FPS you definitely want to have that who doesn't want to see what their FPS is when they're tinkering around with their games and stuff High mouse cursor, I should do that. Uh, auto adjust window size. I like having my windows small, I don't like making them big. And I rendered a main window, it says enable this if you want. Oh. 
Enable this if you want to use the main dolphin window for rendering. That means this window right here will render your game. Okay, that's the general tab. Enhancements. Uh, internal resolution. Just leave it on auto. Anti-aliasing. Don't want it. That's actually that's actually uh, pretty much to here. I'll just read it off because I honestly don't really know what it does. It says reduces the amount of alias aliasing caused by rasterizing 3D graphics. Uh, render picture look less blocky. Pretty much that's what it does. You can't afford it if you're here trying to tweak, trying to get your FPS. Uh, obviously you can't afford it. I don't know if I can. I don't even want to bother. Uh, anisostropic filtering. Enhances visual quality of textures. Uh, oh, with, pretty much uh, what this means is oblique viewing angles. When, uh, when say you're playing Soul Calibur or any kind of fighting game, when the camera zooms in and turns, or when you're using the, the C-Stick to turn and look around and stuff like that, the, those blurry pictures, it'll give it better texture and make it look nicer. Alright, force texture filtering. Even if the emulated game uh, explicitly disabled, uh, yeah, disabled it improves texture quality slightly because it glitches in some games. You can pick that if you want to. But again, that will probably affect your performance. Alright, hacks. This is it right here. Uh, whatever it comes with, uh, leave it the way it is. Like uh, fast mip maps, I'm pretty sure that comes with it. And also disable pixel per depth or per pixel depth that comes with it as well. Disable lighting and disable fog. These are the only two useful ones as far as uh, your FPS will go. Disable lighting, well obviously if you turn lighting off it will be brighter, it won't be nice and is a bit annoying but if you are dying to play these games might as well do it. Disable fog, now that's a tricky one. If a game relies on fog like say Blood Omen 2, there's a lot of fog there. If you disable that fog it's gonna mess with your game hard. I don't know why, but it does personal experience. So, if you're gonna play a game like Animal Crossing or nice simple uh, cell cell shaded games or or Soul Calibur, I know doesn't mess with fog so so much. Go with that. But if you're gonna play a game like Blood Omen 2, like dark gritty games, do not do not disable it. Okay, your accuracy. That's pretty much uh, uh, to. Uh, if you set it to safe, it won't miss as, uh, as many uh, texture updates for RAM. If you set it to fast, it will miss some. Depends. If you go to fast, you'll get a few glitches and all that. Now, advanced, I don't know a lot about. Um, I know wireframe just sets it to wireframe mode, like in like debug mode. Uh, it just gives you wireframe versions of of your characters. Okay, now. That's your graphics. Now to cheats. Cheats are pretty important, especially when you're messing with FPS. Now, if you're using Game Booster and you're getting that FPS, don't mess around with cheats. Not worth having. But okay. Now what you do is you right-click on your game and hit Properties. What that'll do. I didn't know this for a while. I, was, I saw somebody do. I was like, Oh my God, yes, something else to do other than just sit here and mess with the same fucking screens the entire time. But yeah. Uh, Enable dual core. Enable idle skipping. I think my music's gone. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Enable MMU. Enable BAT or BAT. M MMU speed hack. Definitely want that. Uh, yeah, I'll go through these. Enable dual core. You know what that is. You know what idle skipping is. MMU memory management unit needed for s some games. If you turn it off, it will. It will uh, speed you up a bit. Um, the function of the memory management unit accurate to the hardware but slow to emulate. If you want, uh, this will vary depending on the game you're running. This is accurate to my hardware, but it's very slow to emulate. So I want I want to use it because I'm running 100 percent. But you say you were playing Soul Calibur, turn it off. Um, speed hack does not work for every game, but it's pretty much a uh, just a fast version of the MMU. You want that? Uh, V-beam emulation. If the F only if the FPS is erratic, meaning if it goes down and then goes up, you want to use that. Uh, block merging. Oh, speed up disk transfer rate. And enable fast disk access. 
on fast, off compatible. Meaning, if you turn it on, it will speed stuff up. Sometimes it probably won't work, or whatever. Okay, uh, you know, block merging. Don't know what that does. And see this fast, so you want that on. Uh, they're pretty direct with their with their uh, settings. I don't see it's not hard to mess with. And then you got this. This is like a rating. I don't and I don't know why you would need it because you, there aren't any updates and there's no network as like you can just go find the ISOs off a of dolphin. But yeah, I just put it as perfect. Eh, whatever. The rest here, you know, patches. If you got patches for dolphin, I don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. Don't know what. Well, actually, this is just. Like the the license for the game, and then this is what's on your disc. But yeah, that concludes uh, my walkthrough on tweaking Dolphin 3.0 emulator. Hope you liked it. Please rate and subscribe. Arr. Okay, everyone. I'm going to go into an in-depth look on how to tweak Dolphin before using Game Booster because I uh, neglected to go through that process before. Okay, first of all, you need to open Dolphin, of course. Okay. Dolphin, okay. Alright. Now, we're pretty much going to be messing around in this area. Uh, we're not gonna really mess around with the GC pad or remote. I'll actually do a walkthrough on how to use uh, what is that called? Motion Enjoy. But for now, we're gonna look at how to tweak your uh, dolphin settings to get you the highest FPS you can get. Now, I'm naturally going to assume that you are looking at this walkthrough. Or tutorial, uh, as I might say, because you were trying to get your FPS up. Game Booster will not solely do that on its own. Now, these, the way I have mine uh, configured is after Game Booster. So we're gonna try to aim for before Game Booster. Okay, if you haven't seen my walkthrough for how to use Game Booster, go ahead and find it on my uh, page. All right, we're gonna start with configuration. I've done several tutorials on this already, uh, you know, messed up ones, but yeah, <laughs> okay, enable dual core setup, that's a speed up, and what uh, dual core is, is uh, if you have two cores, this is perfect for you, if you have one core, you can still use it, it's still beneficial, but if you have dual core, obviously it's going to do much better, now, uh, idle skipping, I don't need it, I don't use it, idle skipping, it's a speed up. It's useful to you. Okay. Enable cheats. Just go ahead and click that. I will get into that later. Frame limit. I'm going to do a brief explanation on this. Um, kind of like torrenting. Uh, you have your up, upload speed, and then you have your download speed. Now, if they're both set at unlimited, you're not going to get the most out of your uh, your download. You're not going to get it as fast as you possibly can. So what you're going to do is you're going to set a limit to that. You're going to set a limit to one or the other, or, well, yeah, both, and you'll get better download speed. And it works the same way with uh, frame limiting. So you want to set that to 60, because 60 is the best possible FPS you can get. Maybe 61, 62. That's preferable. Okay. Your CPU emulator engine. Just set that to recompiler, JIT. It's recommended. Obviously, you don't want to use interpreter. It's very slow. You don't want to use DITIL because it's experimental. Uh, lock threads to cores. Force console as NTSCJ. If you don't know what that is, that's uh, that's the setting for Japanese games, and that will do that on its own. You don't have to even mess with that unless it's not working. Then you'd have to force it. Okay. Now we're done with the general tab. We're going to move over to interface. Uh, panic handler, handlers is exactly what it uh, suggests. Uh, disabling this may avoid a, a annoying and non-fatal messages, but it may also mean that Dolphin suddenly crashes without any explanation at all. So if you'd rather just your game just to crash without hanging on with pop-up boxes, which I don't prefer that. I like to see what's going wrong so I can go ahead and troubleshoot it. 
So you might want to turn that on if you're savvy enough to go ahead and figure out how to stop that from happen, uh, happening. From on stop is exactly what it suggests. When you go to exit the game, it'll ask you if you want to uh, shut off the game. So if, if you have a problem with accidentally hitting the uh, X, X button, uh, exit button, go ahead and uh, turn that on. All right. Audio. Don't really gotta mess with this unless you're like me and I make videos for video games that I gotta turn it down. But you're probably not like me, so you can just go ahead and set that however you prefer. That's the only thing you really need to do here. You just leave GameCube the way it is, and we go ahead and leave it that way. Okay, now we're done with the configuration tab. Graphics. This is where it all comes into play. Now, you're, if you have Direct 3D 11, use that. If you have Direct 3D 9, use it. If you have both, use uh, 3D 11. Reason why? Because you always want the most out of your graphics. Uh, switching to Direct 3D 9 will not speed up anything that you're doing at all. Your adapter, that is your graphics card. That's where you want to find your graphics card. And if you're wondering, well, is, it, is my graphics card uh, fast enough to run the emulator? If you have anything, if you have a computer, a standard, like, three, $400 computer from, like, 2006, you cannot run any of these games. So you might as well stop trying now. Um, your full screen resolution is exactly what it is. Full screen resolution is the resolution that you want to run at. Now, your resolution should always be set to your internal resolution. So, if you want to set it to 640 to 400, that is, that will get you maximum FPS, but you want to set your internal resolution down to that. You, it's not very nice. Uh, I don't prefer to do that, but if you want to go ahead and do that, go the extra mile, go ahead and go for that. Okay, use full screen, exactly what it suggests. V-Sync, I'll go ahead and read it off. Wait for, oh. I don't know why that keeps pop, popping up, whatever. Uh, V-Sync, wait for vertical blanks in order to reduce tearing. Decreases performance if em emulation speed is below 100%, so you wanna turn that off. But I have 100% uh, emulation, so I don't need to. It's actually uh, easier to deal with games, honestly. Show FPS, who, do, who doesn't wanna see, oh. Who doesn't want to see their FPS? When you're running around tweaking on your stuff, you want to see what you're getting. Hide mouse cursor, that's a given, you want to do that. Adjust, uh, auto adjust the window size. Uh, yeah, it just automatically adjusts to the, your internal resolution. And then render to main window. What that means is that it's going to render in this window over here instead of coming up with a separate box. Most of the time you don't want that. So. Yeah, we're done here. We're gonna go on to enhancements, internal resolution. Just keep that on auto unless you intend on having like 640. But just keep it on auto and anti-aliasing. You do not need this. Uh, pretty much, it just makes your textures less blocky. Uh, any uh, any stop uh, any so trop and anisotropic filtering. There you go. Enhances visual quality of textures that are, are, are oblique. And what that means is if you're spinning, uh, like looking around in a video game or you're in a fighting game, it, it kind of spins to come in to set for that, that, uh, what's the word for it? That side scroll look, you know, where you can still move around the screen. It's going to smooth out those blurs. It's, you don't need to really worry about it. Just keep it a 1x. Uh, scale EFB copy. It increases your quality, but decreases your performance, so you don't want this. Force texture filtering. Uh, let me read this real fast. It causes glitches in games, but it doesn't mess with your performance, but it does increase uh, your graphics. Okay, hacks. This is what it all comes down to. Now, whatever your emulator comes with, leave it at that. I mean, it should be coming with fast mit maps, disable per pixel, uh, uh, per pixel depth. That's a tongue twister. And cache display lists. That's an, uh, that's, I don't think that is checked off the bat, but you should uh, check it even though it is experimental. It speeds up your emulation. Now, the two that you really need to worry about is, is disable lighting and disable fog. Disable lighting is obviously what it does is it will 
disable the lighting in your game. It'll make it really bright. Now, it, to me, it's a bit annoying, but it will speed up your emulation. So if you're willing to do that, go ahead and do that. Disable fog is a little bit tricky, though. Now, say you're playing Blood Omen and it has lots of fog in it. If you disable fog, it's going to mess with your game a lot. I know because I've done this. I have personal experience with it. So if you're playing a game like Animal Crossing or Soul Calibur, something that doesn't use a lot of fog and preferably uh, cell, cell shaded games, you can use Disable Fog. It's not going to mess with it too much. Now the rest of this you don't want to mess with, so I'm not going to go over it. Advanced, I don't know a lot about. I might in the future uh, learn about it and come back to it. Alright, so we're done here. DSP, we already went over this. Don't really need to worry about it. Alright, cheats. This is where this comes into play. If you right click it and press properties, you're going to get all these. Now this is all set to what I need and some of it I don't need. I actually need to change it, but I'll go over that when I'm done with the video. But we already know the first two, dual core and idle skipping. You want them on. Enable MMU. If you turn it off, you're your emulator will move faster but it is needed for some games so you're just gonna have to test that out as you go uh, enable bat bat uh, a function of, of the memory memory management unit accurate to the hardware but slow to emulate uh, this is accurate to my hardware so uh, if your game's not accurate to it just turn it off um, but you definitely want to turn it off anyway because it's fast so keep that or wait Oh, I read the wrong one. That's it's same thing, actually. Uh, turn this on. It's a speed hack. Uh, if your FPS is erratic, which means if your SPS goes from like 10 to 50, you have a problem. Go ahead and turn that on. That'll try to stabilize it a bit. Obviously, speed up disk transfer rate. You definitely want that. Enable block merging. Don't know what that does. I don't know what the next one does either. And uh, don't know what that does either. If checked, the bounding box register <coughs> will be updated. Used by the Paper Mario games. It's used by Paper Mario, so uh, I don't really need it. I don't even like that game. But if you like it, use it. Custom projection hack or ZTP hack. Enable this to speed up Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Uh, disable for any other game. So if you want to play Zelda, go ahead and enable that. Custom projection hack. Unless you already have your own hacks, and I'm assuming that you don't because you're here with me going over on how to tweak and get your FPS up, you don't have any personal hacks. So you might want to get into that. If you do, uh, go ahead and check that and add your hacks. Now this, I'm not too sure why it's here because the game does, or the emulator doesn't really update itself and it doesn't really have a social networking uh, system or like a networking system in general. Like if it did you'd be able to go ahead and get your ISO straight off a of dolphin instead of having to search in BitTorrent or go to cool ROMs or whatever it is you do so I don't really understand it but I just put my games at, at perfect well at least Soul Calibur because I know that works very very well as well as Animal Crossing Blood Women on the other hand is kinda glitchy I think that's just because of the copy I got but that's it for this and patches uh, you know just updates patches and stuff like that uh, I don't know what that is, don't know what that is. This is just, you know, the licensing, the info on the game. And this is pretty much the files that are on your disc. Assuming that's what that little disc is there for. But yeah, that is pretty much on how to go over and tweak Dolphin. I uh, really, really hope you like my uh, in-depth tweaking of Dolphin 3.0 emulator. Please rate and subscribe. Thank you. Okay, everyone. I'm going to go into an in-depth look on how to tweak Dolphin before using Game Booster because I uh, neglected to go through that process before. Okay, first of all, you need to open Dolphin, of course. Okay. Dolphin. Okay. Alright. Now, we're pretty much going to be messing around in this area. Uh, we're not going to really mess around with the GC pad or Wiimote. 
I'll actually do a walkthrough on how to use uh what is that called? Motion Enjoy. But for now we're gonna look at how to tweak your uh, dolphin settings to get you the highest FPS you can get. Now, I'm naturally going to assume that you are looking at this walkthrough or tutorial, uh, as I might say, because you were trying to get your FPS up. Game Booster will not solely do that on its own. Now, these, the way I have mine uh, configured is after Game Booster. So we're going to try to aim for before Game Booster. Okay. If you haven't seen my walkthrough for how to use Game Booster, go ahead and find it on my uh, page. Alright, we're going to start with configuration. I've done several tutorials on this already. Uh, you know, messed up ones. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Enable dual core setup. That's a speed up. And what uh, dual core is, is uh, if you have two cores, this is perfect for you. If you have one core, you can still use it, it's still beneficial. But if you have dual core, obviously it's gonna do much better. Now, uh, idle skipping, I don't need it. I don't use it. Idle skipping is a speed up, it's useful to you. Okay, enable cheats, just go ahead and click that, I will get into that later. Frame limit, I'm gonna do a brief explanation on this. Um, kind of like torrenting. Uh, you have your up, upload speed, and then you have your download speed. Now, if they're both set at unlimited, you're not going to get the most out of your uh, your download. You're not going to get it as fast as you possibly can. So, what you're going to do is you're going to set a limit to that. You're going to set a limit to one or the other, or well, yeah, both, and you'll get better download speed. And it works the same way with uh, frame limiting. So you want to set that to 60, because 60 is the best possible FPS you can get. Maybe 61, 62. That's preferable. Okay. Your CPU emulator engine. Just set that to recompiler, JIT. It's recommended. Obviously, you don't want to use interpreter. It's very slow. You don't want to use JITIL, because it's experimental. Uh, lock threads to cores. Force console as NTSCJ. If you don't know what that is, that's... Uh, that's the setting for Japanese games, and that will do that on its own. You don't have to even mess with that. Unless it's not working, then you'd have to force it. Okay, now we're done with the general tab. We're going to move over to interface. Uh, panic handler, handlers is exactly what it uh, suggests. Uh, disabling this may avoid a, a annoying and non-fatal messages, but it may also mean the dolphin suddenly crashes without any explanation at all. So if you'd rather just your game just to crash without hanging on with pop-up boxes, which I don't prefer that. I like to see what's going wrong so I can go ahead and troubleshoot it. So you might want to turn that on if you're savvy enough to go ahead and figure out how to stop that from happen. uh, happening. Firm on stop is exactly what it suggests. When you go to exit the game, it'll ask you if you want to uh, shut off the game. So if, if you have a problem with accidentally hitting the uh, X, X button, uh, exit button, go ahead and uh, turn that on. All right, audio. Don't really gotta mess with this unless you're like me and I make videos for video games that I gotta turn it down. But you're probably not like me, so you can just go ahead and set that however you prefer. That's the only thing you really need to do here. You just leave GameCube the way it is, and we go ahead and leave it that way. Okay, now we're done with the configuration tab. Graphics. This is where it all comes into play. Now, you're, if you have Direct 3D 11, use that. If you have Direct 3D 9, use it. If you have both, use uh, 3D 11. Reason why? It's because you always want the most out of your graphics. Uh, switching to Direct 3D 9 will not speed up anything that you're doing at all. Your adapter, that is your graphics card. That's where you want to find your graphics card. And if you're wondering, well, is, it, is my graphics card uh, fast enough to run the emulator? If you have anything, if you have a computer, a standard like three four hundred dollar computer from like 2006 you cannot run any of these games so you might as well stop trying now um, your full screen resolution is exactly what it is full screen resolution is the resolution that you want to run at now the resolution should always be set to your internal resolution so if you want to set it to 640 to 400 that is that will get you maximum FPS but you want to set your internal resolution down to that you, it's not very nice. Uh, 
I don't prefer to do that, but if you want to go ahead and do that, go the extra mile, go ahead and go for that. Okay, use full screen, exactly what it suggests. V sync. I'll go ahead and read it off. Wait for. Oh. I don't know why that keeps pop popping up, but whatever. Uh, v sync. Wait for vertical blanks in order to reduce the tearing. Decreases performance if em emulation speed is below 100%, so you want to turn that off. But I have 100% uh, emulation, so I don't need to. It's actually. Uh, easier to deal with games, honestly. Show FPS. Who, do, who doesn't want to see? Oh, who doesn't want to see their FPS? When you're running around tweaking on your stuff. You want to see what you're getting. Hide mouse cursor. That's a given. You want to do that. Adjust uh, auto adjust the window size. Uh, yeah, it just automatically adjusts to the, your internal resolution. And then render to main window. What that means is that it's going to render in this window over here instead of coming up with a separate box most of the time you don't want that so yeah we're done here we're going to go on to enhancements internal resolution just keep that on auto unless you intend on having like 640 but just keep it on auto and anti-aliasing you do not need this uh, pretty much it just makes your textures less blocky uh, any uh, any stop uh, any so drop and uh, any tropic filtering. There you go. Enhances visual quality of textures that are are, are oblique. And what that means is if you're spinning, uh, like looking around in a video game or you're in a fighting game, it, it kind of spins to come in to set for that that uh what's the word for it? That side scroll look. You know, you can still move around the screen. It's gonna smooth out those blurs. It's you don't need to really worry about it. Just keep it a 1x. Uh, scale EFB copy. It increases your quality, but decreases your performance. So you don't want this. Force texture filtering. Uh, let me read this real fast. It causes glitches in games, but it doesn't mess with your performance. But it does increase. Uh, your graphics okay hacks this is what it all comes down to now whatever your emulator comes with leave it at that and it should be coming with fast mit maps disable per pixel uh, uh, per pixel depth that's a tongue twister and cache display lists that's in uh that's i don't think that is checked off the bat but you should uh, check it even though it is experimental it speeds up your emulation now the two that you really need to worry about is disable lighting and disable fog disable lighting is obviously what it does is it will disable the lighting in your game it'll make it really bright now it to me it's a bit annoying but it will speed up your emulation so if you're willing to do that go ahead and do that disable fog is a little bit tricky though now say you're playing blood omen it has lots of fog in it if you disable fog it's going to mess with your game a lot i know because i've done this i have personal experience with it so if you're playing a game like Animal Crossing or Soul Calibur, something that doesn't use a lot of fog, and preferably uh, cell, cell shaded games, you can use Disable Fog. It's not going to mess with it too much. Now, the rest of this you don't want to mess with, so I'm not going to go over it. Advanced, I don't know a lot about. I might in the future uh, learn about it and come back to it. Alright, so we're done here. DSP, we already went over this. Don't really need to worry about it. Alright, cheats. This is where this comes into play. If you right click it and press properties, you're going to get all these. Now, this is all set to what I need, and some of it I don't need. I actually need to change it, but I'll go over that when I'm done with the video. But we already know the first two dual core and idle skipping. You want them on. Enable MMU. If you turn it off, your, your emulator will move faster. But it is needed for some games, so you're just going to have to test that out as you go. Uh, enable BAT, B-A-T, uh, a function of, of the memory, memory management unit. Accurate to the hardware, but slow to emulate. Uh, this is accurate to my hardware. So, uh, if your game's not accurate to it, just turn it off. Um, but you definitely want to turn it off anyway, because it's fast, so keep that. Or right, wait. Oh. I read the wrong one. That's it's the same thing, actually. Uh, turn this on. It's a speed hack. 
Uh, if your FPS is erratic, which means if your SPS goes from like 10 to 50, you have a problem, go ahead and turn that on and that will try to stabilize it a bit. Obviously speed up disk transfer rate, you definitely want that. Enable block merging. Don't know what that does, I don't know what the next one does either. And uh, don't know what that does either. If checked, the bounding box register <coughs> will be updated used by the Paper Mario games. It's used by Paper Mario, so uh, I don't really need it. I don't even like that game. But if you like it, use it. Custom projection hack or ZTP hack. Enable this to speed up Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Uh, disable for any other game. So if you want to play Zelda, go ahead and enable that. Custom projection hack. Unless you already have your own hacks, and I'm assuming that you don't because you're here with me going over on how to tweak and get your FPS up, you don't have any personal hacks. So you might want to get into that. If you do, uh, go ahead and check that and add your hacks. Now this, I'm not too sure why it's here because the game does, or the emulator doesn't really update itself and it doesn't really have a social networking uh, system or like a networking system in general. Like if it did, you'd be able to go ahead and get your ISO straight off a of dolphin instead of having to search in BitTorrent or go to cool ROMs or whatever it is you do. So I don't really understand it, but I just put my games at, at perfect, well at least Soul Calibur because I know that works very, very well, as well as Animal Crossing. Blood Omen on the other hand is kind of glitchy, I think that's just because of the copy I got. But that's it for this, and patches, uh, you know, just updates, patches and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know what that is, don't know what that is. This is just, you know, the licensing, the info on the game, and this is pretty much the files that are on your disk assuming that's what that little disk is there for but yeah that is pretty much on how to go over and tweak dolphin I uh, really really hope you like my uh, in-depth tweaking of dolphin 3.0 emulator please rate and subscribe thank you okay everyone I'm going to go into an in-depth look on how to tweak Dolphin before using Game Booster because I uh, neglected to go through that process before. Okay, first of all, you need to open Dolphin, of course. Okay. Dolphin, okay. Alright. Now, we're pretty much going to be messing around in this area. Uh, we're not going to really mess around with the GC pad or a Wiimote. I'll actually do a walkthrough on how to use, uh, what is that called? Motion Enjoy. But for now, we're going to look at how to tweak your uh, dolphin settings to get you the highest FPS you can get. Now, I'm naturally going to assume that you are looking at this walkthrough. Or tutorial uh, as I might say because you were trying to get your FPS up game booster will not solely do that on its own now these the way I have mine uh, configured is after game booster so we're gonna try to aim for before game booster okay if you haven't seen my walkthrough for how to use game booster go ahead and find it on my uh, page all right we're gonna start with configuration I've done several tutorials on this already, uh, you know, messed up ones, but yeah, <laughs> okay, enable dual core setup, that's a speed up, and what uh, dual core is, is uh, if you have two cores, this is perfect for you, if you have one core, you can still use it, it's still beneficial, but if you have dual core, obviously it's going to do much better, now, uh, idle skipping, I don't need it, I don't use it, idle skipping, it's a speed up. It's useful to you. Okay. Enable cheats. Just go ahead and click that. I will get into that later. Frame limit. I'm going to do a brief explanation on this. Um, kind of like torrenting. Uh, you have your up, upload speed and then you have your download speed. Now, if they're both set at unlimited, you're not going to get the most out of your, uh, your download. You're not going to get it as fast as you possibly can. So what you're going to do is you're going to set a limit to that. You're going to set a limit to one or the other, or, well, yeah, both, and you'll get 
better download speed, and it works the same way with uh, frame limiting. So you want to set that to 60, because 60 is the best possible FPS you can get. Maybe 61, 62. That's preferable. Okay. Your CPU emulator engine. Just set that to recompiler, JIT. It's recommended. Obviously, you don't want to use interpreter. It's very slow. You don't want to use JITIL, because it's experimental. Uh, lock threads to cores. Force console as NTSCJ. If you don't know what that is, that's... Uh, that's the setting for Japanese games, and that will do that on its own. You don't have to even mess with that. Unless it's not working, then you'd have to force it. Okay, now we're done with the general tab. We're going to move over to interface. Uh, panic handler, handlers is exactly what it uh, suggests. Uh, disabling this may avoid a, a annoying and non-fatal messages, but it may also mean the dolphin suddenly crashes without any explanation at all. So if you'd rather just your game just to crash without hanging on with pop-up boxes, which I don't prefer that. I like to see what's going wrong so I can go ahead and troubleshoot it. So you might want to turn that on if you're savvy enough to go ahead and figure out how to stop that from happen, uh, happening. Firm on stop is exactly what it suggests. When you go to exit the game, it'll ask you if you want to uh, shut off the game. So if you have a problem with accidentally hitting the uh, X, X button, uh, exit button, go ahead and uh, turn that on. All right, audio. Don't really gotta mess with this unless you're like me and I make videos for video games that I gotta turn it down. But you're probably not like me, so you can just go ahead and set that however you prefer. That's the only thing you really need to do here. You just leave GameCube the way it is, and we go ahead and leave it that way. Okay, now we're done with the configuration tab. Graphics. This is where it all comes into play. Now, you're, if you have Direct 3D 11, use that. If you have Direct 3D9, use it. If you have both, use uh, 3D11. Reason why? It's because you always want the most out of your graphics. Uh, switching to Direct 3D9 will not speed up anything that you're doing at all. Your adapter, that is your graphics card. That's where you want to find your graphics card. And if you're wondering, well, is, it, is my graphics card uh, fast enough to run the emulator? If you have anything, if you have a computer, a standard like three four hundred dollar computer from like 2006 you cannot run any of these games so you might as well stop trying now um, your full screen resolution is exactly what it is full screen resolution is the resolution that you want to run at now your resolution should always be set to your internal resolution so if you want to set it to 640 to 400 that is that will get you maximum FPS but you want to set your internal resolution down to that you, it's not very nice. Uh, I don't prefer to do that, but if you want to go ahead and do that, go the extra mile, go ahead and go for that. Okay, use full screen, exactly what it suggests. V Sync. I'll go ahead and read it off. Wait for. Oh. I don't know why that keeps pop popping up, but whatever. Uh, v Sync. Wait for vertical blanks in order to reduce the tearing. Decreases performance if em emulation speed is below 100%, so you want to turn that off. But I have 100% uh, emulation, so I don't need to. It's actually uh, easier to deal with games, honestly. Show FPS. Who doesn't want to see? Oh, who doesn't want to see their FPS? When you're running around tweaking on your stuff. You want to see what you're getting. Hide mouse cursor. That's a given. You want to do that. Adjust uh, auto adjust the window size. Uh, yeah, it just automatically adjusts to the, your internal resolution. And then render to main window. What that means is that it's going to render in this window over here instead of coming up with a separate box. Most of the time you don't want that. So, yeah, we're done here. We're going to go on to enhancements. Internal resolution. Just keep that on auto unless you intend on having like 640. But just keep it on auto. And Anti-aliasing. You do not need this. Uh, pretty much it just makes your textures less blocky. Uh, any uh, any stop uh, any so trop and uh, tropic filtering. There you go. Enhances visual quality of textures that are are, are oblique. And what that means is if you're spinning, uh, like looking around in a video game or you're in a fighting game, it, it kind of spins to come in to set for that that uh what's the word for it? That side scroll look, you know, you can still move around the screen. It's gonna smooth out those blurs. It's you don't need to really worry about it. Just keep it a 1x. 
uh, scale EFB copy it increases your quality but decreases your performance so you don't want this force texture filtering uh, let me read this real fast it causes glitches in games but it doesn't mess with your performance but it does increase uh, your graphics okay hacks this is what it all comes down to now whatever your emulator comes with leave it at that and it should be coming with fast mit maps disable per pixel uh, uh, per pixel depth that's a tongue twister and cache display lists that's in uh that's I don't think that is checked off the bat but you should uh, check it even though it is experimental it speeds up your emulation now the two that you really need to worry about is disable lighting and disable fog disable lighting is obviously what it does is it will disable the lighting in your game it will make it really bright now it to me it's a bit annoying but it will speed up your emulation so if you're willing to do that go ahead and do that disable fog is a little bit tricky though now say you're playing blood omen it has lots of fog in it if you disable fog it's going to mess with your game a lot i know because i've done this i have personal experience with it so if you're playing a game like Animal Crossing or Soul Calibur, something that doesn't use a lot of fog, and preferably cell uh, cell shaded games, you can use Disable Fog. It's not going to mess with it too much. Now the rest of this you don't want to mess with, so I'm not going to go over it. Advanced, I don't know a lot about. I might in the future uh, learn about it and come back to it. Alright, so we're done here. DSP, we already went over this. Don't really need to worry about it. Alright, cheats. This is where this comes into play. If you right click it and press properties, you're going to get all these. Now, this is all set to what I need, and some of it I don't need. I actually need to change it, but I'll go over that when I'm done with the video. But we already know the first two dual core and idle skipping. You want them on. Enable MMU. If you turn it off, your your emulator will move faster. But it is needed for some games, so you're just going to have to test that out as you go. Uh, enable BAT, B-A-T, uh, a function of, of the memory, memory management unit. Accurate to the hardware, but slow to emulate. Uh, this is accurate to my hardware. So, uh, if your game's not accurate to it, just turn it off. Um, but you definitely want to turn it off anyway, because it's fast, so keep that. Or right, wait. Oh. I read the wrong one. That's it's the same thing, actually. Uh, turn this on. It's a speed hack. Uh, if your FPS is erratic, which means if your SPS goes from like 10 to 50, you have a problem. Go ahead and turn that on. That'll try to stabilize it a bit. Obviously, speed up disk transfer rate. You definitely want that. Enable block merging. Don't know what that does. I don't know what the next one does either and uh don't know what that does either if check the bounding box register <coughs> will be updated used by the paper mario games it's used by paper mario so uh i don't really need it i don't even like that game but if you like it use it custom projection hack or ztp hack enable this to speed up legend of zelda twilight princess uh disable for any other game so if you want to play zelda go ahead and enable that custom projection hack Unless you already have your own hacks, and I'm assuming that you don't, because you're here with me, going over on how to tweak and get your FPS up, you don't have any personal hacks. So you might want to get into that. If you do, uh, go ahead and check that and add your hacks. Now this, I'm not too sure why it's here, because the game does, or the emulator doesn't really update itself, and it doesn't really have a social networking uh, system, or like a networking system in general, like if it did, You'd be able to go ahead and get your ISO straight off a of dolphin instead of having to search in BitTorrent or go to cool ROMs or whatever it is you do. So I don't really understand it, but I just put my games at, at perfect. Well, at least Soul Calibur because I know that works very, very well, as well as Animal Crossing. Blood Omen, on the other hand, is kind of glitchy. I think that's just because of the copy I got. But that's it for this and patches, uh, you know, just updates, patches, and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know what that is, don't know what that is. This is just, you know, the licensing, the info on the game. And this is pretty much the files that are on your disk. 
assuming that's what that little disc is there for. But yeah, that is pretty much on how to go over and tweak Dolphin. I uh, really, really hope you like my uh, in-depth tweaking of Dolphin 3.0 emulator. Please rate and subscribe. Thank you.